Hi guys, so welcome back to Crafty Quilt and Designs. I hope you're well and having a really fantastic day. So guys, today it's a really fantastic free, and as all of them are usually are, they're free. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Okay, right, so today's quilt is a quilt as you go, and it's a really fast one. So if you've got some really big, beautiful prints, this is the one for you. Now, I have compiled this quilt. I've modified my quilt as you go method and I've used three rows for this. So I've doubled up the rows so the quilt comes together a lot more quickly. All right, so if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Karen and I make beautiful quilts and anything else that I fancy, literally anything else that I actually fancy. Well, sometimes, but I mainly do quilts and for those of you who are always rocking with me welcome back guys so but that being said love you lots enjoy the video give me a thumbs up let me know what you actually think about this one this one I bought the fabrics from some time now when I was traveling around Australia and so I fell in love with these and I did show you another video about buying those fabrics I'll link it up there for you so in case you're new here and you haven't seen it so you can link both videos together and you'll know exactly what I'm referring to all right guys so with that being said bye for now love you lots <laughs> hey guys, so um, today's quilt is going to be something really exciting. I bought these fabrics a long time ago. Well, I say a long time ago, since I've arrived in Australia. And these fabrics are Aboriginal prints. Now, I bought these when I was traveling around in Alice Springs. And so now I've actually decided to use them. Now, they are long quarters. So not the normal fat quarters, but long quarters. So the normal fat quarters is of a rectangle shape these are long so let me show you one of them it's what it looks like okay so you are able to get 10 inch squares from these and so I've cut 10 inch squares from a bundle all right and so from that you do get a little bit left over whereby you can use um, something else to make um, another quilt so I've only used two 10 inch squares from each of the fat quarters so let me show you the prints what they actually look like and I'm going to tell you how I'm actually going to compile this quilt I'm going to make it a nice easy one because I like beautiful simple quick quilts I don't necessarily like to make a quilt that's taken me three four weeks to complete I just think that's absolutely crazy I just love the process of doing the project quickly and get it over and done with so let me show you what I'm going to work with and then you'll see what I'm planning on doing. So this is the long quarter that I'm referring to. As you can see, it's, it's lovely and long. So it's come on the rectangle rather than on the sort of the square that you get. So you can get two 10 inches, as I said, and probably get about a five inch or eight inch, I think, left over so you still have enough to make another project with so you can cut them into um, five inch squares etc or use it as it is all right so that's that so the prints are absolutely beautiful I just love them now one of the reasons why I decided to do a 10 inch is because I didn't really want to cut these fabrics up they are absolutely beautiful look at them the prints are just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so I tell myself why would I destroy you know the print and not be able to make out what they are and a lot of these fabrics have a story to tell since I've been in Australia I've learned a lot about the Aboriginal culture and every dot and every artistic drawing you see here means something to them so it's not just a random thing that they actually do okay so a lot of them means dream lines a lot of them also uh, dots or prints that's finding their way home it tells a story about hunting it tells a story about the family sitting down having meals together so their life is mainly or their story or how they tell their journey to their children is all about story time and so a lot of these prints absolutely depict that this one here I think it's called traveling mother 
absolutely beautiful. And if you look very carefully, you can actually see the mum there. All right, so hence the reason why I didn't really want to cut it up into small pieces. That symbol there actually means female. <laughs> so again, such history on this print that I really don't want to destroy it. So hence the reason why I've decided to go with 10 inch square. So if you've got beautiful prints, you can use it for this pattern that I'm going to work with today. So I've decided to pair my 10 inch squares with a very plain fabric because I didn't want to use anything that was too heavily print because I wanted something that is still contrasting but still not to take over these beautiful prints here and so I've decided to go with cream so I do think that they will work very nicely with the print itself because the actual pattern that I'm working with I really want this to stand out so I think the contrast is there quite well especially with this blue here all right so I have 24, I think it's 24, I have maybe a little bit more, but I am going to use 24 prints or 24 10 inch squares for this pattern. I may make it a little bit bigger, but we will see how I feel. As you know guys, I am a bit of a on the go person. I like to do things in the sense of how it actually feels for me. So, I, you know, as much as I plan. It's all about how I feel. I'm very artistic in that way. So this is what I'm going to go with. So what I'm going to do now, I put these on the side. I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip on the right grain from this fabric here. And I'm going to just show you what I'm going to do with it. So I have my fabric here opened. It is ironed, even though it was folded already, but I'm not going to iron it again. I think it's fine. And I'm going to fold it. And just to make sure that there are no creases here what I mean by that because there's so many layers I don't want any lumps there so I don't want it tucked under within there so I'm just feeling for that and smoothening the fabric all right now I am going to trim it at the top so that I get an equal cut at the top there and I'm only going to cut one strip because I am cutting the whole length and width of this fabric here I'm just going to line it up in one of the grid lines and I'm just going to take it and again I'm just making sure it's nice and straight. I'm also lining up on the edge of one of the grid lines here and at the top and at the side because I don't really want to open up this whole thing just so that I can get one strip here and I think one strip may do it. If not obviously I'll just cut some more. So I'm just lining it all up making sure it's beautiful and straight and I'm going to cut my two and a half. There goes my nice straight edge. And that's all I need for now. Let me fill that back. Now, because my blocks are 10 inches square, I do not want to make this 10 inches. So I'm going to go with, um, hmm, I'm thinking, nine inches so i'm going to go with, i'm going to cut these strips into nine inches now now let me show you what i'm thinking about so i started a little diagram here and so these are these squares here represent <laughs> my 10 inch squares so i am going to cut the strip and i'm going to attach it just to the edge of the fabric all right and when I lay it out, I'm going to turn it so that it actually make a star. At first I considered just putting it together and it will make an odd diamond. But then I thought it just looks like a lump there. It doesn't really look really nice. It doesn't stand out. So when I decided was to turn it, this is what it looks like in my impression in my head. So that is what I'm going to do. So hence the reason I'm only going to cut it to nine inches because I don't want it to go right to the end. It's going to be fitted on the slant. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so all of my strips have been cut. So I've cut these now into nine inches by 2.5. Now, the easiest way to do this is to measure, and I've 
already done it on this blog so I'm just going to show you I don't think it may show up on camera but I'm using the grid lines here to measure my 10 inches I'm starting there from the point where it says um, the 9 so not the full 10 but the 9 and I'm coming across to two and a half and all I've done simply is to just use my ruler line it up at the 9 inch point and the two and a half inch and then draw a line okay so I'm going to try and bring it close to the camera hopefully you can make it out all right so it just literally means that you are just simply sewing it on an angle so what I'm going to do now is to take my nine inch strip hence the reason why I am marking at the nine inch on the grid line and two and a half then I'm going to angle it on that line so it must come down to the edge of the block there and to the top there as well okay so it must hang there for the nine inch mark and there so once you've drawn it then irregardless of where the block falls on the line you already know you've got your two and a half inch marked across and you've got your nine inch there and that is where you're going to line it up and then all you're simply going to do is to sew it now the importance here is to sew it literally very close to the right side of this strip you don't want to use a quarter inch seam okay why because the objective here is once we fold it over we want to make up that area that we are cutting off because we are going to trim that off all right so i'm just going to sew it and then i'm going to show you what i mean by that so i'm going to line it up there again on that line and i'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and just simply sew i'm just going to sew a literally a hair on that right to the edge of the fabric i'm not doing a, a quarter inch seam as i said and i'm going to hold it on the line at the end there and just simply sew if I can find the machine feed which I always seem to kick further away so I'm just literally right to the edge of the fabric take your time I am literally sewing on that line all the way down and you can chain piece so that this goes by really quickly now I am using a white thread so you may not necessarily see it so I'm going to fold it over like so okay I'm just going to finger press that there just so that it stays in fact let me get my little mat give it a little press because I have my iron all ready to go so I'm just going to press it out because I want it to go all the way extended out all the way out lovely and so we're going to trim the extra off now so I'm going to flip it because now I can see exactly where I need to trim and I'm going to use my ruler line it up to the edge of the 10 inch square because essentially what i'm doing here is using the cream fabric or the cream strip to replace that strip of fabric that i'm now cutting off so i'm just going to trim there and i'm going to turn and just take this little bit off here as well again lining it up with my 10 inch square and just trim off so I'm just gonna flip this so you can actually see what's happened now so I've replaced that however you can opt to leave that on there or you can take it off to be honest I have been removing it why because because of the color of the fabric here the sashing fabric that I'm adding it is quite easy for you to see that continuation of that 10 inch square so I'm just going to trim it off and this time I am going to use my quarter inch seam so I'm just lining it up on the edge of the stitch line on that cream fabric and just cut it off 
now you can keep this as scrap or you can chuck it away I'm going to keep it all right because I think it's a good piece to use to scrap <coughs> well excuse me I'm I've got a little bit of a cold and that's simply it so that is our block as quick as that literally as quick as that now what I'm going to do is to take a couple and lay it all out as I showed you on my diagram so I'm going to finish this later I've only got like four or five more to do and um, I'm just going to lay it all out so you can see what the pattern looks like so you can use any of the fabric or the blocks in this case now to lay it out so remember when I showed you on my little diagram initially I had it like let me bring it into your shot so that you can see what I am referring to so I'm gonna get another one I'm not going to use obviously different um, cuts so to make sure I don't pick up the same two that will not be a good demonstration so initially I was going to go with a diamond but I decided not to so if I lay it like so I will essentially get myself a star in the middle and I thought that's pretty nifty so and that's it and all I've done literally is just simply turn it's a lovely spiky star there but all I've done literally is just trim off a little bit replace it with a more dominant color that shows off so really contrasting color that is you can see and use different blocks okay so this is now my block simple now you have two ways of doing the quilt as you go you can sew this together all right as a, um, a whole block and then we can line it up on the batting or we can sew it together in rows the option is yours basically okay so because it's 24 I think I I planned so that will mean we have one two rows okay so you can do two rows but I'm going to do it I may possibly do a little bit bigger and add an extra row so I will have 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 blocks all together and just make it uh, lovely and big not sure if I'm gonna add any borders at the moment but that is where we are going with the blocks I just think it's absolutely beautiful it's so simple it shows off the beauty of the fabrics and I don't have to cut it down into small little pieces to make a star or anything like that it is just showing off the beauty of the fabrics okay so that is where we're going with this so I'm going to continue make all of the of my 30 blocks and then we're going to start laying it out Okay guys, so let me bring you up to speed with what I've done so far. So um, the blocks are made, all right? I have comprised the quilt top into 36 blocks so far. So what I'm going to show you now is how to lay the blocks out. However, it is a quilt as you go, so I'm not going to stitch the whole quilt top together. I am going to sew the blocks onto the batting and that's the way I like to do my quilt as you go. So I don't necessarily make the block um, as you go so I don't piece the block on the batting I make the block normally as you would for any quilt and then I sew the whole block onto the quilt top I just think it's a lot easier to do that way I don't want to have to be flopping small pieces of squares for a block I just think it doesn't make is it I think it's too too 
time consuming, okay? I want to make the block individually and then simply add it to that batting. So for me, time is of the essence, speed and getting the quilt top done in a timely fashion, all right? So the blocks are made, I'm just gonna sew them onto the batting. Now my batting measures um, 72, so to the line, to the line, 27 inches in width. The length of the batting really doesn't matter because we are going to leave room for borders. Now you could measure out the size of border that you want and I'll show you how to do that. But my batting comes in a roll and so therefore it's quite long. So I don't necessarily need to um, measure it out okay because I have ex extra on the side it really depends on how many blocks you have so let's say for example I had um, let's say 10 blocks in a row definitely I would need to measure out my batting to ensure that all of those 10 blocks fit carefully on the batting row that I am going to lay the blocks in. Because remember, when I make my quilt as you go, I do it in rows, not the squares of the patchwork, okay? So because mine's a six, as I said, I have 36 blocks, so it's six across and six down. But however, I am going to do it in twos. So I'm gonna sew two rows together rather than the one, just to speed it up. So then, therefore, um, my quilt will be comprised in three rows, to make sense, okay? So that's it literally, that's my husband texting, I'm going to ignore it. Um, so that's it, so I'm gonna show you now how to lay it all out. No backing fabric has been added. I am simply just going to piece it together, i.e. sew both blocks together on that um, batting. Okay, so no quilting at the moment, just gonna sew it down. So again, the, the point here I'm trying to make is that I am putting the blocks together as I would if I was making my quilt top ordinarily. The only difference is, is that I am just sewing it simply onto the batting immediately, all right? So let me show you now what I'm going to do and how I intend to lay this out, okay? Inclusive of leaving room for the borders. Let's get started. Okay, so these are all of my blocks here. Okay, so as you saw me make them and I explained to you how to simply measure out and cut, etc. So I'm going to put these at the side for a moment. I'm only going to show you an example of probably six or so or eight or so. So this is the batting I refer to. And as you can see, it is double in size here. So it's just simply fold over. All right. And that is the, the width I'm referring to in terms of how wide it is all right and I've already shown you that it's rolled and again it is folded there all right just to make sure you understand the gist of what I'm saying so I have my blocks here okay now I can do one or two things I can decide I don't want to add any batting sorry my apologies I can decide I don't want to add any um, borders and simply just add the blocks on to the batting and then it would be done with it okay in this case I do like adding borders to the quilt it increases the size and it helps to frame the artwork which is what I'm going to call it because these um, Aboriginal prints are very much artwork to me and so I, I'm going to refer to it as that so I want to show off these prints I really want them to stand out hence the reason I didn't want to cut them into small pieces so I am going to measure, and I think I've already anticipated in my brain, that I'm going to use the width of my ruler, which is six inches wide, all right? So my width of my ruler there, right to the top is six inches in width, okay? And I'm going to do the same for the side, six inches there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to give myself a little marking as to where it stops. So I'll say my six inches, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So my six inches stops there. All right, I'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so number 18, I'm gonna put my first block down there. Okay, so right there is where my first block goes. So I can do one or two things. I can simply give myself a pin and pin it on there, but I usually just give myself a little marking, all right? So the second one will go opposite. 
there and at the same time you're going to see the pat the pattern actually come together let's just move this up so you can see what I'm doing a little more clearly all right and the next one as I said remember that it is in twos so you can see the star actually forming here and notice how I am turning it to actually get that design and the last one again goes with so I'm literally putting all of those fabrics together so all of that design in the middle there so that is the layout so that is how I'm going to sew it together so hence the reason why I said I'm going to sew it in four rows so I'm going to sew these two together or the whole six of those and then I'm simply going to fold it over this way and continue with the other one so I'm going to do that now and then I'll show you what it, exactly it looks like but that is the design of the patchwork there and you can see that star in the middle coming out really beautifully and just take note of the fact that it's a very small bit there and that's important so I don't want you to waste it you don't need much there at all but that's going to be trimmed all right so that's where we are at the moment so I'm going to stitch it all on and then I'll show you the result okay guys so let me bring you up to date of what I've done so far you're gonna need your pins for this next session here okay so I have stitched the first row down onto the batting okay so all I've done is this stitch and flip method so all I've literally done is put the first block down take the second block front sides together put a stitch there and then continue with the others all the way down the second row I have not stitched on to the batting I just stitched it as if I would normally if I was making my quilt top okay I stitch a whole row together bearing in mind that you need to align the blocks in the correct order so that it's you can see the star so I've done so again for the second row also I've also ensured that I wanted my blocks to come out the way I, I visualize it so I i.e. I have two of the same blocks so I've put them together every time for each of them now what I've done now is to take the row that I have stitched as a whole row and I've pinned it at every intersection okay so I've pinned it together with the batting at every intersection now one of the things you need to understand here is that um, if your quarter inch seam is correct both your blocks should or your row of blocks should end together if for some reason you find that your intersections here are not meeting up it could be that your quarter inch seam was incorrect okay so I haven't got that problem you already saw from the end here it lines up nicely and if I come all the way back to the top up here is where I started it's nicely aligned also so what I'm going to do now is to simply add a stitch again a quarter inch seam all the way down there okay to adhere the edging of this onto the batting now you may be wondering but well, why would you do it that way you could obviously yes um, stitch the rows individually but with this case it allows me to finish quicker number one number two it takes away the effect that I have to now add another joining here because my second row is going to be joined here in this case I am just going to be doing three of these together okay whereas if I did it individually I would have done six individual rows together and then I will have six individual um, seams of joining the batting together I hope that makes sense so once I have stitched along here all the way down all I'm going to do now is take my basting spray and just spray along here and flip it back over get my iron and just iron it and adhere it to the actual batting and then I'll simply just start to quilt as simple as that okay so I'm going to get to those stages and then I'll show you what it looks like okay guys hopefully you can't hear too much of my background with the AC on so my quarter inch feet is on there and all I'm doing literally is just sewing it onto the back the batting there all the way down okay as you would so basically as I said I'm just piecing it directly onto the batting right? so that's 
actually it and align it nice and easy take your time go all the way down Okay, so you just saw me cut the backing fabric to be added on to the quilt as it measures so far. All right, so the size it is so far. So all I have done literally, as you can see, is literally cut the same as the batting. All right, so I'm going to glue base together and then I'm going to quilt it and then I'll show you the next stages. Okay. All right guys, so I went ahead now and did the second row for the piecing. So all of the piecing is now stitched on and I have the balance of it just rolled up in the corner here. All right, so it's lovely and smooth. I've given it a nice iron just to smoothen it out. Now what I wanted to ensure that you understood clearly is that once I did the first one, I lined it all up at the top there just to make sure that I had my space that I left here for my um, border. Okay, so I just lined up the first row and the second row together and started the second row at the same spot. All right, I hope that makes sense to you. Now, for the top, you don't have to add too much there because we've already left quite enough to join for the actual top one. Right, I hope that makes sense. So the first row, when we actually sewed it, we actually made sure we had enough room there to join it together. Okay, now for the second one, I've also left enough space here to fold over to join the back together. All right, so, so we have the first row already done and now we're doing the second row. So again, the second row here, I have left room so that I can join the third row. All right, so that is how we're compiling the quilt. So you can see my sort of twisting stars coming out really lovely and easy it's a very quick quilt doesn't take long and again you know it shows up the print beautifully so what we're going to do now is just start the quilting and then um, we're going to obviously I will show you then how to attach both rows together so I'm going to get the quilting done I'm just going to do swirls in this one and then for the other one I'll probably do the same pattern I did for the first um, row so you can see the back it is on there as well okay so exactly what I've done for the first row is exactly what I've done for the second row and you can see it is just slightly bigger so that I have room for joining the rows together so I have room at the bottom there and I have room at the top there also all right so let's get started on the quilting all right guys so the machine now is set up for quilting as you can see there's a small amount actually rolled under the um, throat so that there's still enough room to actually quilt okay so just to point out you know that you can actually do this on your sewing machine all right so you don't need the stress of quilting the whole thing together as a whole quilt top if you don't want to do it in that particular way you only can just do the rows and each row will be rolled up so much more easily and you can get it done more quickly and you'll be really compiling the quilt in three stages all right so i'm going to quilt this now as i said i'm just going to do swirls and then we will move on to the last row Okay guys, so I wanted to bring you up to speed what's been happening so far before I move on any further and to just ensure that you understand what's happening with this quilt as you go in three rows. Now, this is the first row you're looking at. So again, you can see that it's already quilted and you can see my border at the top there that I've left areas to add on my border and also at the side there as well. 
okay now what I went ahead and did was just to trim off the batting there all right so remember when I first did this there was an extra batting at the bottom there and I've trimmed it off I've trimmed it off in preparation to join the second block or the second rows I should say because remember we are quilting the quilt as you go in one two rows so rather than do it individually so ie one row two row three row four row five row six rows in this case the quilt is compiled a lot more quickly because we're doing two rows at a time all right so as I said went ahead and cut away the batting there right to the level of the blocks themselves and I've left this here now this here is the fabric that we're going to use to cover up that raw edge once we've joined the other one together so I'm going to bring the other um, row out so give me a second let me put the camera down and I'll bring it out and show it to you all right, so I've got the second row on the top now so I can show you. So the second row, remember, was just quilted in swirls and I just did some serpentine lines within the stars, all right? Now, what I'm going to do now is to join both of them. So again, I have trimmed off the batting on the second row and you can see it's the second row because the end that I left to, to, um, to join this together is quite small now remember i said there's no point in leaving on lots of a wider space of batting and fabric because at the end of the day it's pointless we are just going to join the rows together the only time we do that leaving that extra batting is at the side and at the top for our border okay all right so we'll just fold away that so again for the first row which is this one here I have already trimmed away the batting and I've done the same for the second row here. Now you may be wondering why I've got all this extra fabric here, but as I said before, this is what I'm going to use to fold over to hide the raw edge, okay? So what I'm going to do now is to flip these two together, front sides together, lining up the seam line there and that seam line there or that block line whatever you want to refer to and then making sure that the seam lines match up with both of these ones here again here and here and so on okay so obviously at this stage we need our pins now what I wanted to say just before I move on to do this is that when you do the second row and the third row you need to get your batting and your fabric backing which should be the same length of the row it should not be different because remember we are adding on the same amount of blocks so you shouldn't have any issues there now the only difference the only difference in adding on the rows is that your top will not have the wider backing and batting because at the end of the day remember I said this is the top to add on for our um, borders all right so you just need to ensure it's a nice small bit so you're not wasting the fabric and the batting and when you do this just measure the size so that you are starting the blocks at the same as you can see I have already done that so I lined up the batting okay and I've marked it just like we did the first one the first row you can see the marking still there of where I actually put let me just bring it out properly all right so the markings are still there who I anticipated where I'm going to lay the blocks down first of all okay so that's why I wanted to point out just to make sure that you understood that so that when you sew it together everything should line up equated properly and if I go right down to the end you can see here that everything lines up properly okay so what I'm going to do now is to flip this front sides together and I'm just going to sew again using a quarter inch seam. Remember, we are still sticking to the quarter inch seam, even though we're doing a, a quilt as you go. That does not change. So what I'm going to do, okay, I can do two things. I can do one step now and one step at the other. I could trim this because I personally feel this is just too much here. So this looks like roughly two inches that I've left here. I will, will trim it down to just one inch okay why one inch because all I want really is just to fold it down 
and then fold it over again to hide that raw edge okay i don't want too much bulk there okay and again if it's too much it makes it more visible so i just want to trim this so what i'm going to do first of all i'm going to tell you in the stages that i'm going to do i'm going to trim mine off here so i'm going to trip trim off my backing in line with where i've trimmed off my batting so i'm going to lay down on my cutting mat use my ruler and just trim it up nice and equated all the way down including the edge there because remember this area here is for my border okay so i'm going to continue the same thing and trim it all the way down all of that purple off so it will look like this okay so you would not see that purple anymore that is what you're going to see and i'm just going to do front sides together and all we're going to have extra is that <coughs> excuse me once that's done then all i'm going to do now is then trim that off to one inches you can do it now it doesn't really matter as to what step you do first probably will be easier to just put it on your mat and just trim it to one inch and then that's that and then you obviously join it so in a sense i think it is because you wouldn't have the two quilts together so i would definitely say which is what i'm going to do just trim off um one inch out so you have one inch to fold and then i'm going to then trim this off and then i'll show you what it looks like so i'm going to pin it together and show you exactly what i'm talking about before i move on okay guys so i have folded the top is the top because i know i have the border areas here showing and i know which block i have chosen for the two top rows okay and i've just folded it up and i've allowed the backing to just be hanging off here and i'm going to trim off just an inch because i think it's about two inches i'm going to measure it just to be on the safe side okay <clears throat> so it's one and three quarters so i'm going to take off um three quarters out so i just have um that one inch left all right now um what i wanted to say also before i move on is that when i trim my batting off i actually use just a scissors all right so i just use a nice sharp scissors and trimmed it off so i'm going to line it all up now <clears throat> to an inch so i'm using the line obviously on the ruler lining it up to the edge of the block and i'm just going to trim now don't be too fussy about this it's not a big deal it is literally just to fold twice and to hide the raw edge and that's it <clears throat> all right so that's simply what we're looking for now for the second one now which is the other block So what we're going to do is the same thing. So remember, you should still have that other area there. I haven't, I haven't trimmed the bottom piece because again, I'm going to use that bottom piece now to join the last row. So you're only just trimming the top whereby you left a small bit and I purposely left a small bit at the top there to join the blocks together because I know I'm not going to be using that. All right, so again, I'm going to just trim it off the backing fabric because I've already cut off the backing so I'm just going to line it up to the edge of the the block and the batting and just simply give a nice clean sharp cut this is a very quick method of doing um, quilt as you go now I know that there are lots of different steps that you can take but you just got to find what works for you and I personally never liked any of the quilt as you go method I've seen out there hence the reason why I sat down and thought well what can I do if it's if this was me what would I would want to do to make this more simplified more um, quicker and for me it's all about compiling the quilts as quickly as possible I don't like a quilt taking ages to complete because I just think that's just way too long um, in modern society we all need things done quickly so for me it's about speed and you know getting through it with with a bit of sensibility rather than going through the process of it being long-winded
and in this case you completing the job in the same effect but faster all right so look at that so it's lovely and clean now you've got a nice clean edge there and all we're going to do just like we've done before in doing any sort of block you're going to put the front sides together so a quarter inch and we're going to open those seams so that when we cover them they lay lovely and flat so remember once again you need to ensure that you have your sides you have your area at the bottom there to join the last row i haven't touched that yet i'm only going to touch that once the other row is completed so i'm going to lay these together and then i'll come back and show you what it should look like once you've pinned them all right guys so went ahead now and pinned it together what you're looking at now is a second row on top okay and so let me just come in closer and show you what the pins are looking like so again I've lined up all the edges together so I know I can see my markings there when my first block starts and I have pinned it okay now what I tend to do when I pin is just pin a little bit away from the edge or cut away from the edge because I just don't want to be bothered with moving the pin so I just pin it and I just slide it back so I have that area there the same thing I've done for this one here also now, when you're laying the rows front sides together, you need to ensure that it is matching up. Do not let it be like this, for example. Let me just see if I can do that without one hand. Don't let it be like that. So it must be even, okay? So even it all to the end and pin it all the way down, okay? Just ensure that everything is nice and neat and ready to go. And again, it's a quarter inch seam that you're working with. All right. So I'm going to go sew it together now. Once that is done, then I will come back and I will show you how to fold it over to create that, to cover that raw edge. It's the raw edge I'm referring to. So line up your quarter inch on the edge and sew. I have changed my stitch length to number four so that it moves nice and smooth and I am just going to sew. So I'm going to continue with that until it goes all the way down to the end. At the back here you can see where the quarter inch has already been stitched and you can clearly see the markings there. If I can bring a little bit closer so you can actually see that there all the way down. So everything is lovely and neat there. All right. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you the back now. So I have already pressed it open, so I'm just gonna unpin and just fold it back so you can see. I'll just take a couple off. So you can see I've pressed it open there. It's lovely and flat. I don't wanna go all the way down because I've already done most of it. Okay, now it's very important that you, pr that you press, do not miss this step. Why I'm saying that is because if you don't and you just decide to just fold it over and remember it's two folds to so the raw edge, raw edge to raw edge, so the raw edge of the backing fabric to the raw edge of the backing, um, the batting there, all right? And you're going to fold it over just to hide it so that it's lovely and neat, okay? Now, if you do not press it, you will find that you will get a fold here, okay? It will fold over like so. The edge will fold over. And if you decide to just press it like that, you will just obviously have a fold. So do not miss the pressing stages. So you press the front as well as you open the seams at the back. Very, very important. Now, as you can see here, that it looks it has been joined very nicely you would not be able to tell that it was joined as a quilt as you go okay it's, it looks as if it's been joined ordinarily everything lines up there it looks really lovely all right so all I'm going to do now is to finish all these bits at the bottom here and just move the quilt up so you can see it again where I'm continuing so I've pressed it all open and it's continuing to fold. Now, what I would say is that I did trim a little bit off here because if it's too big, then you'd have to fold about three times. So you can make that informed judgment for yourself 
as to how much excess you have there and how much you need to fold. The idea here is to fold twice. I wouldn't fold once because then you have the raw edge. Now, if you want the raw edge to show, that's fine because once it's washed, obviously, it will become crinkly and you'll have a nice effect on the back. So that's not a negative, all right? But if you don't want the raw edge, then obviously you cut it small enough so that you fold it and then you fold it over again. I'm using the camera to hold as well as the other hand to try and demonstrate. I haven't got anyone here with me, so I do apologize. All right, and then you just fold it over again. The objective is to make it as a neat a fold as possible, and I'm just pinning as I go. So when I go onto the sewing machine now, I have obviously I'm going to sew this side up, and I'm just literally going to sew right along the edge just the same way as though I am doing a binding. So I'm just going to sew all the way down just to keep it down. And once I've sewn it, I'm just going to go back on the iron now and I'm going to give it a nice steam press so it's lovely and flat. Okay? So I'm going to continue with that and then once I'm finished, I'm then going to show you now what it actually looks like. All right, guys. So you're looking at the seam or where I've joined both of the first row and the second row. Now, what I would say is that when I first did my first initial stitch down, um, when I folded it over, that is, I used my quarter inch foot. So, and then I thought it would have been much easier to use my walking foot. So I did two stitch lines along there and I think it's um, sealed it down nicely. So that's what it looks like on the back from a distance and you've seen it close up and I then I pressed it so it's lovely and flat. I guess I'll just turn it over again so I've just folded in half just to show you. Now if I open it up you can see as well what it looks like and again it doesn't really look any different as though you have normally put the quilt top together as you would on a regular basis. So what we're going to do now is to simply um, do the same thing to the last row and then we will join it again as normal so that's what the quilts look like so far so you can see those four rows together there all right and um and you can see that line come through on the other side just ensure that you use the same color thread on the top for your quilting that you've used to join those two rows together so it doesn't show up and I do like the effect of the double lines which I think is fine so that is what it looks like now so I'm going to do the last row just as I've done before and I'm going to show you the last row before I actually start quilting and how it is laid out so remember it's the same width and length because obviously by this time you know what the length and width of the quilt is all right so I'm going to get the last row out and I'll show you what I've done This quilt is called Dream Time. It measures 68 by 68 inches square. The prints are Aboriginal artwork of their life and culture. Many of the prints depict dream, dream time and storytelling of ways of, of, of spiritual life for ancestors. Many of the art, if not all of it, is done by women and can only be done by particular persons within that tribe as they will have the knowledge, training, guidance from their leaders. It obviously, as I said, shows the art of storytelling and it also shows a lot of the prints about a winter spirit. It represents, which is represented in the purple color. Um, it tells about food, hunting, um, food, which is they like call bush tucker, etc. You know, um, this fabric is really beautiful. It really shows the culture of Aboriginal people and, um, you know, what, what Australia means in, in a whole and how it's really valued. Um, the quilting now that, that I did throughout, um, just really basic, a lot of swirls and feathers, which is a lot is done in the actual prints themselves. For the stars, I use a lot of serpentine lines and zigzags, lines to actually enable, just to show off the spinning stars or that star is actually turning. 
I've called this quilt dream time only because of the prints on it and the fact that a lot of the storytelling is about you know dreaming and where they go to wander in terms of becoming one with their motherland so guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial it was certainly a learning process for me to discover all about Aboriginal culture and I hope I've sort of shared some of that with you today so once again if you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe leave me a message I'd love to hear what you thought about the quilt and the prints etc and of course give me a thumbs up so bye for now happy quilting and I'll definitely see you in the next tutorial love you guys bye